Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, doing another movie review in the month of October. Why not review a very overlooked family sci-fi comedy that came out on April 27, 1990, which is called Space Invaders. It's about five Martians right here on the cover who mistakenly uh, take their ship to a small town in Illinois and they started to start and they start an alien invasion where the entire town thought they were just well seeing that it's said in Halloween that they thought that they were trick-or-treaters when in reality they're just Martians you know taking over and this DVD release that I picked up uh, came out uh, in the early 2000s from Touchstone Home Entertainment yeah, Sub Diary of Disney which of course Touchstone Pictures was the company that started in 84 with the first release of Splash where they um, released mostly genres of of several films that are either R-rated or PG or even PG-13 like if they had some dark themes or any of that stuff so that's what they put out with um, it's it's a bare bones release but it is an anamorphic widescreen it has Dolby Digital Surround Sound uh, 2.0 not 5.1 as you expected but it's the best it could sound for this film and it's closed captioning of course <laughs> uh, but I did heard that Kino Lober that has um, the rights to the Disney library is going to put this out as a special edition on Blu-ray and DVD with features uh, included but we want to find out how this is going to turn out because I bet they're going to put like a new retrospective documentary some trailers and TV spots included yeah I remember there was like several of them too uh, where you had the characters actually uh, come up with their own uh, run liners or any of the types even though some of those one liners are not in the movie so that that's a plus um so apparently uh, not many people talk about it well except for maybe some people like for example uh, James Rolfe, uh, he just recently did a review on Monster Madness, the Cinemassacre, on Cinemassacre, Monster Madness, uh, joining in with Justin, yeah, the fat guy, um, which just turns into a very vague uh, rental, rental, uh, yeah, rental reviews that they often do. It just feels more like one where they're just, they're just talking much of the film, um, they said that they didn't hold up, or they, I guess they're just pretty much focusing on their Zack Nut bar that they found, which is in the movie, by the way. Yeah, not much of a review that I can explain, uh, but it's not one of the best, I'm sorry. Uh, I know people dismiss it as, as being goofy, which, hey, that's the whole point. I mean, it's, it's a goofy slapstick comedy that's not meant to take itself too seriously. I mean, the aliens themselves are trying to be serious, but deep down of it, they're just, well, they're dim-witted. <laughs> uh, they're, they're stupid. They don't even know what they're doing. <laughs> or they're going to do something, but they just know that they're going <laughs> to mess things up. Okay. Um, but it also has the, the debut of actress Ariana Richards. Um, he went on to do the movie Jurassic Park. Uh, yeah, Douglas Barr from the TV series, uh, the the TV series uh, Buck Rogers, and then later, The Fall Guy, and Royal Daniel, uh, who was previously in the film Killer Clowns from Outer Space, which I find this really interesting because, like this movie, he also played a farmer, which uh, like that film. He too played a farmer, and he has a dog. And suddenly he's he's this, uh, and then suddenly he discovers something that he never thought he would discover, an alien invasion. <laughs> yeah, so surprise difference here too. Uh, I also should uh, mention that Royal Daniel uh, has been in films like The Trouble with Harry from Hitchcock, and he's done like several films in his legendary career you know, before he passed in 1994 yeah. um, but 
either way, he was great. Um, and you got like um, several actors. Um, even the Tony Cox actually wore the costume as uh, Corporal Pez. Yeah, he was one of them. And which actually has voice actors like uh, Kevin Thompson, Jeff Winkless, uh, Tony Pope, Joe Lasky, God rest his soul. Yes, the voice actor who was is in the TV show Out of This World. He's an actor himself, but he was also the voice of Plucky Duck on Tiny Tooth Adventures. Yeah. And um, you got Bruce Lano, Kurt uh, Thatcher, and Patrick Reed Johnson, who happens to be the, the director of the film. And the same director who gave us um, Angus from 1995, and he also did Baby Stay Out with Joe Mantegna. Yeah, that one. <laughs> Which was um, produced by John Hughes. Yeah, that comedy. So you got a great team here. So anyway, uh, I saw this movie, I think when I was like five years old, uh, yeah, because this came out in 1990. I might, I might have had seen this as a double feature with uh, Ernest uh, Goes to Jail, I, I think. I mean, because I remember my family used to go to that local uh, neighborhood feeder called the Eagle Feeder, which it's the feeder in Eagle Rock, California. Which, by the way, um, they're actually going to bring that feeder back, from what I heard. Uh, they're going to add a video store, which they're going to include tons of titles of DVDs, Blu-rays, uh, even VHS tapes, for that matter. I think they might sell 4K stuff, too. Um, maybe not for rent, but also to, to buy as well. So it's going to be located together with the feeder. So now they're going to start playing some movies, maybe some independent films, or... Or any other kind. I mean, so it'll probably take me back to my childhood days of going to that movie theater and watching double features of second run uh, films. Yeah, like mostly uh, yeah, major films, like, yeah, mostly just uh, major films that they play. So that's cool. Yeah, because they were a lot cheaper then, too. It's like we had to pay like a like dollar to, to actually see these movies. And we actually get like some refreshments, like we get some popcorn or or nachos, uh, gummy bears, like any other candy or and, and a drink to go with it while watching these movies. That's what we do. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. Um, but I actually remember having fun with this. Um, I mean, it's goofy, it's silly, it's wacky. That's the whole point of the charm of the movie. That you know not. You know, not taking itself too seriously, and they are hip and they're hilarious, as as it claims. And yep, Earth will never be the same. <laughs> so why not? Um, but anyway, let's uh, get to the review. It stars Douglas Barr, once again, Oil Daniel, Ariana Richards, Greg Berger. Yes, who's a voice actor, but he's also an actor. Done some solo films too. Uh, Fred Applegate, Wayne Alexander, J.J. Anderson, Patricia Darbo, Tony Lee Williams, Kevin Thompson, Jimmy Brusco, Tony Cox. Yes, Tony Cox from Bad Santa, Friday, among others. W. Lee Carrington, Tommy Madden, and the voices themselves, Kevin Thompson, Jeff Winkless, Tony Pope. Joe Lasky, Bruce Lango, Kurt Thatcher, and Patrick Reed Johnson, who's also the writer, joining in with Scott Lawrence Alexander, and the director. The movie began set in a small town called Big Beans, Illinois. We meet a local town sheriff who's a widower named Sam Hokey, who's played by Douglas Barr. Who lives with his daughter, Kathy, played by Ariana Richards, who just moved to a new house. They had to do a lot of unpacking while having some pizza and drink and, and a drink with all these uh, the Flintstone kids' glasses. Kathy was feeling very left out after the move, especially since she now misses her mom. Um, so Sam had to work with his deputy 
named Wessel Pillsbury, played by Fred Applegate, you know, just so he'll be able to earn a badge. We also meet an elderly farmer named Mr. Winchmiller, played by Royal Daniel, joins with his dog, who's being evicted by his uh, farmhouse, so he's, which is being threatened by a real estate owner to force him to, to move, since he doesn't have enough money left. Okay. Uh, but meanwhile, uh, in Mars, a space armada called the Imperial Atomic Space Navy, also known as Battle Group 7, were in an interstellar war against uh, their longtime enemy, the Arcturians. But they're being forced by battle that's uh, commanded by these enforcer droids who are trying to keep the Martians in line. But then suddenly, five Martians who are very dim-witted have wound up on, on a small Martian spaceship for the civilian asteroids patrol, had intercepts a distress signal directly from the fleet, which then later follows by a rebroadcast of The War of the Worlds from 1938, uh, based on the H.G. Wells novel. That's a radio dramatization by Orson Welles. So this was like a, a 50th anniversary of the rebroadcast for Halloween at a local radio station in Big Bean. <laughs> They really mistaken this for a real alien invasion and not wanted to miss out on, on the glory. They landed on the ship and began their invasion. And this is where we meet these uh, Martians. Uh, Blazney, which he's like a Jack Nicholson uh, type. Yeah, because he sounds like him. But he's a smart mouth uh, pilot, which has more common sense. Um, but he doesn't think it was a good idea at times, but... Of course, he had to be ignored by the rest of his entire crew, which joins him by Captain Beepto, who's uh, the overzealous, uh, optimistic one. Next, we have Lieutenant Gillywig, who's a, a know-it-all, ambitious hothead. Uh, then we have the careful and calculating scientist named Dr. Ziploc an over ego type named Corpid Pez. So they they join in just searching for the fleet that they already landed and seeing that it's Halloween the entire town that we're mistaking them as you know kids in costumes. Yeah that's where we see uh, a Kathy wearing a you're gonna love this a xenomorph alien costume from the movie Alien. And this is where Kathy meets uh, a new friend named Brian Hampton, who dresses up as a duck, played by J.J. Anderson. Yeah, it's sort of like uh, a wisecracking type, you know, acting like a duck. I mean, the way he talks and speaks. <laughs> I mean, but then again, all, all the Martians themselves were pretty wisecracking themselves as well. <laughs> okay. So all the locals have revealed the truth that yes, they are being invaded by Martians, including the Winch Miller because he was the one who spotted the, the Martians that crash landed uh, straight at the farm. And then the, the deputy actually records uh, the ship that's going through 300 miles per hour yeah, because that's where Sam actually found the camera, which has the videotape of how that uh, Russell had filmed all this. Kathy also be friends with um, a small robot known as Scott in the Can. Yeah, this was, uh, which actually is more smart and intelligent than than the rest of the five Martians alone. So, so anyway. Captain Bitto uh, later got hit by a truck, which happens to be um, Steve uh, W. Klimbecker. I think that was him, because he would later be dressed up as um, Hulk Hogan costume, and he's played by Greg Berger. Um, he just came to the gas station, you know, just to get some gas for his truck, and then next thing you know, they did found the alien that's under the grill. Yes, he was drinking beer and starts spitting. 
Uh, he actually joins in with his uh, girlfriend. Uh, but that's where we meet um, a gas station attendant named Byrne, who happens to be the brother of Russell. And he's played by uh, Wayne Alexander. Which then, sooner or later, Bipto actually uses him as his robotic slave, so that way you know he could take over and do his entire task. You know, try to control like he actually is doing all these commands. Gets to take out uh, the power engine from the truck and all that. Put together to see if this will be able to get the ship going. And that's what they're planning on. Uh, but then the uh, Giddy Wig, Ziploc, and Peds um, just got uh, thrown out uh, from the car um, after they're being taken directly to do some trick-or-treating uh, with Kathy and Brian by Mrs. Banderspool, who's played by Patricia Darbell. She was driving off with them until um, Kathy tries to, uh, telling her that they were actually her cousins from California, mistaking them for for just kids just wearing the costumes because, you know, the aliens do have their attitudes and they accidentally uh, <laughs> zapped in their their laser uh, accidentally so they were kicked out and then next thing you know um, they're about to blow up um, the town's uh, co-op which is the silo and that's where it turns into uh, corn kernels that, that eventually turn that eventually becomes popcorn <laughs> yes uh, it covers all over the screen and because they knew they made a mistake they were hoping they were going to destroy everything in the entire town just when the entire town is is beginning to find out about the invasion that's happening next thing you know uh, Brian um, had captured Blaze Knees by hitting him with the trash can lid uh, and then later he helps uh, the alien repairs his ship while Mr. Winch Miller was trying to blow the ship up by using his dynamite Blazenead had to zap the green zapper at Mr. Winch Miller and yes which causes him to shake completely he was like moving as fast as he can while holding the dynamite and then later he, he took the dynamite from him and and put it directly inside the the engine for the the ship hoping that this will go it tried to go up up in the air but then it just keeps just stops and crashes lands uh, on the ground um, to make matters worse the Martians actually were planning on destroying the earth which is DOD donut of destruction yeah they're gonna they're gonna deconstruct the entire earth and that means that the rest of the town, including the aliens, are going to be destroyed. They'll be dead. Now they realize they made a horrible mistake. Uh, the hyperdriver starts to go into a meltdown, which threatened to create a black hole. The Enforcer drone uh, wouldn't let them leave at all. What they do to stop the Enforcer drone? Well, Mr. Winch Miller decided to take the dynamite inside to put it directly to the enforcer drone you know, tricking him so that way you know, they'd be able to have the Martians um, safely uh, go up they collect all the bombs to put together onto the spaceship so that way they'd be ready to launch and it worked only one problem though was that there was something that was completely heavy that went straight into the bathroom so then the Martian just went straight into the toilet seat yeah, with uh, <laughs> all these toilet papers. He pulled the, the flush lever and it releases all the alien manure that landed onto the crops which turns into green beans that are six feet tall. And now Mr. Uh, Wrenchmuller no longer leaves his farmhouse from all these greedy real estate developers who are about to tear down this home so everything turned out for the best for the entire town and including um, Sam and his daughter Kathy and all the rest of the entire town it's what the film was going for you know a, a weird wacky slapstick comedy 
Um, that's also a Halloween uh, comedy that, that you definitely would watch. Um, uh, they really did have some great makeup effects that they done by creating all these uh, alien creatures and you know, Martians. And yes, uh, they they are they always crack in some one-liners and you know they're they're wise cracking types. You know they they sound exactly like like actual aliens. You know, the way they speak, um, I thought they were fun. Um, either way, uh, and. The rest of the cast, you know, they did a great job, uh, especially Ariana Richards. I'm seeing that this is one of her earlier roles uh, before Jurassic Park, so got to give her credit for that. Um, and it's nice to see some costumes here and there. And yes, there are some a lot of moments here where, for example, where you have uh, we have Steve actually dressed up as Hulk Hogan and. And he was like giving kids uh, some cigarettes because that's the only one he has. He doesn't have any candy. Yeah, that was kind of messed up. Um, or any other that they have. Yes, every, all the entire town are dressed up as your familiar characters. You know, like you have one girl that's dressed up as a mummy, another one dressed up as a, a Star Trek um, crew member from the Enterprise. And, and um, or any other, you know, one with a clown, and and then you have Burn dressed up as Zorro, all of that. Um, but um, either way, it's um, pretty fun. Um, its budget was only five million, that that was estimated. So I probably made it a little more that than that. But it only made fifteen point four million. It's not a hit. Granted, um, it didn't do quite as well at the box office, but it did okay. I mean, maybe as just as a moderate, uh, but it wasn't exactly a huge success. And I, I could definitely see why the film's been overlooked over the years. I mean, it, it doesn't play on TV very often. Um, so maybe once in a while it does show up on TV or any other. Um, but... It is, um, in a way, um, a great, a good movie to to watch on for Halloween or any other. That's uh, worth your time. So, but um, it is pretty well done for its time. I mean, for its budget, I could definitely see what they're going for. And I mean, this is probably the first time we never we ever saw like a a, a sci-fi comedy of Martians, but as a family friendly comedy because most of the time it's just any other movie that we've seen with aliens so gotta give them credit for that I definitely like Brian's uh, wisecracks you know when he's a duck but even when he's not wearing the costume uh, afterwards I mean you begin to see him exactly as just a black kid and then he's he's also saying the line bit of nader <laughs> Where, yes, because the, the Martians is going to start their veterinator to to be able to <clears throat> use all these bombs to be able to send their ship all the way back home. There's also a cool song at the end credits, um, which by the way, the music is done by David Russo. So I did a, a creating the score for it. Uh, but the song was, uh, I think this is part of the theme, which is where you hear the... <laughs> The sound effects uh, from the movie, and yeah, you hear all the Martians, you know, singing their verse. Martians, oh, over the world, Martians taking over. Yeah, that song. But Patrick Reed Johnson, I mean, he did a great job um, creating this uh, idea. So I can see why you know it's it's become a cult following over the years. Anyway. So that's Space Invaders, and I give the movie three and a half stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.